It is a quarter to the top of the hour here on First Business. Well, it's the battle of the tech titans, Samsung versus Apple. Both have come from being bit players to now completely disrupting and dominating the mobile market. But who is coming out on top at the moment? And has Apple lost its touch for winning products? Sky News business reporter Nigel Freitas caught up with mobile analyst Horad Di Dio at the ThoughtWorks Tech Symposium to find out. Well, we've had a, a we've had a lot of disruption in the last five years. I think it began with the iPhone, and what that led to is also Android. But those two platforms have completely changed who the incumbent players were. Five years ago, it would have been Nokia, it would have been perhaps BlackBerry, it would have been uh, Motorola as 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 some of the major names, even HTC. Now they're all essentially in in single digit share or less. Uh, and some of them are, are making losses and uh, in, in their place have, have risen Apple and Samsung. Now Samsung has always been there as a, as a phone vendor but not as much as a smartphone company. Uh, they've only really become a smartphone player since 2010 and they've managed now to ship over 70 million in one quarter. That's been made possible partly because they had uh, the Google platform and partly because they also were a supplier to Apple and so had insight into where the market was going early on. The media like to paint this narrative of a battle between uh, Apple on one hand and Samsung on the other for control of the mobile smartphone market. If that's the case, who's winning that battle and why? Well, I think the two are very different companies in terms of what they're trying to achieve. Um, the Apple Apple company as, as a company has been coming from computers for over 30 years and they've really been driving this idea of an ecosystem. Samsung doesn't have its own ecosystem. They're a much more traditional hardware company with, with a vast array of products and vast array of businesses. And so they have different motivations. I think perhaps Samsung wants to become a platform player and is trying to learn how to do so. Uh, so they want to become more like Apple. And Apple at the same time is getting more deeply involved in developing hardware. They have their own platform, their own hardware uh, chips. They have, they have designed their own A-series chips and uh, are involved in manufacturing them to some degree because they own some of the equipment. They've invested over $10 billion in capital equipment the last year. And $10 billion will buy you several fabs uh, if that's the way you want to uh, you want to put your money to work. So um, Apple is getting more to be like Samsung and Samsung is getting more to be like Apple but they're still very different companies and uh, strategically uh, I think Apple is still looking at building something new every few years hopefully learn getting into a new category and Tim Cook has been uh, saying this over and over again that they are looking at new categories as the iPad was a new category for them and, uh, and so we we'll, might see something in TV, we might see something in wearable computing, uh, whereas Samsung, I think, might be getting more into the platform business, might be actually thinking more about the ecosystem ownership question and getting more into having its own store, like maybe like an iTunes, or having its own, um, uh, its own developer uh, network. So who do you think is winning out of the two? Well, in that sense, um, Samsung is winning in terms of units. There are over twice as many sold uh, smartphones as, as Apple, but Apple is still making more money and uh, selling their product probably at twice the average price. You say that Apple might come out with new products in the future, but if we look at what's happened to their share price over the past three to six months, there seems to be a, a loss of confidence or a loss of optimism in their ability to innovate. Has Apple lost its mojo? Well, it's, it's, curious. it's been curious to me. I mean, I've observed the company for, you know, at least since 2005. The rate of new category launches, which is what everyone is waiting for, is very slow. Actually, we've had uh, the, I, the iPod launched in 2001. The iPhone came in 2007. It took six years before there was really a whole new product line from Apple. And then three years later came, well, 2007 to 2010, about three years later came the iPad. So now we're three years after the iPad and people are becoming a little bit anxious. Maybe they expected the iPhone to branch out into more, cat more, more of a portfolio strategy. Uh, and it's still very, very narrow as a, as a product line. 
and perhaps that's a, that's a bit of a disappointment. I, I would have liked to see perhaps more in the low end, uh, something in the low end from, I, from Apple, but they have chosen to be premium and staying that way. So I, I, I'm not sure what the reasoning is for that, but I, I do believe they're working on new things. And if it may take three, it may take four years, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I don't think, however, that Apple has stopped innovating in that sense because it's, I think that's what they're built to do. They're, they're set up fundamentally and organizationally as an innovation company. Now you've characterized the mobile industry as one of high growth but high uncertainty. And at the moment in terms of ecosystems, we've got uh, Google, we've got Apple, uh, Windows also trying to make a bit of a comeback, and BlackBerry too trying to recapture its former market share. How do you see this all playing out going forward? I think iOS and Android will easily cross over the billion mark. In fact, Android will probably do so this year. Uh, and then the question is only what will happen to the remaining two to three billion that are currently non-consuming uh, of smartphones. Uh, if, if it's the problem will not be having enough user base to grow into, the problem will be more how economically viable those users are in terms of revenues and in terms of having the infrastructure to support them because actually that's where a lot of the heavy lifting is going to happen is on the operator side to provide mobile brand with uh, mobile broadband I should say to to these five billion users economically viable broadband which is not easy to do in, in low ARPU economies coming up on first business a taste of the